Founded in 1999 by Jason Burks, Retrospect Films is Oklahoma's largest turnkey production company of its kind. With over two decades of experience, a full-time team of over 20 talented individuals, a 12,000 square foot studio to create in, and thousands of successfully completed projects in both entertainment and advertising. You're in the right place if you like hearing some good old filmmaking stories. On this podcast, we will discuss the pursuit of creating things and the problems we solve by digging up projects from across the last 20 years and giving you a glimpse behind the scenes where the magic happens. You're listening to Retrospect Films from the Archives. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on Retrospect from the Archives. I am Jason Burks and I am joined by Caroline Rice and Taylor Burks. Hello. <laughs> and in this podcast, actually at Broad, in this podcast series, we dig up old projects and discuss all the different problems that we solved and the creative that we put into it and lots of little filmmaking details, some of the behind the scenes. So today we are going to talk about a unique project. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say a specifically complex one, but one that has lots of details, as does everything we ever get hired to do, which is, I suppose, why we're in business. It's true. We are talking about Reesers. Now, I feel like before we dig into this, it might be valuable to watch this little Christmas commercial. Woohoo! So cute. Here we go. Tis the holiday season, family gatherings in sight. So I head off to Reesers where groceries are priced right. First the turkey I just have to choose. Fresh, frozen, or smoked, you really can't lose. Or perhaps a nice rib roast. Reesers quality selection, I love the most. Cookie trays, pumpkin pies, custom cakes too. Party trays, holiday dinners, made fresh for you. Family together's a wonderful sight. With food from Reesers, now to all a good night. All right, so hopefully now you realize that you purchased your holiday groceries at the wrong place. <laughs> uh, you should have gone to Reesers. Um, but let's, we're going to dig into this project. So a, a little history on Reesers. Retrospect has been doing stuff for Reesers for, uh, I would say, almost maybe 15 years. Very long time. This is a, an early client for me, and we have been doing commercials for them for so long. They used to always have Jeff Reeser in them. Uh, in this last year, they actually sold. So now Reesers is owned by a company out of Texas, and we have been working with that company. So I want to start by maybe, maybe we start it on the, uh, on the Caroline on your front. Um, I know you and Brandon uh, probably got an email or something like that. That's mm -hmm. usually how things start. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this project began, what the requests were, et cetera. Yeah. So they wanted a holiday commercial, a 30 second spot that would, you know, not be married to Thanksgiving or Christmas, but kind of work for both. And to just show people that they should come get all their holiday groceries at Reesers because it's going to provide a great time for family and friends. So that was kind of the general request. Mm -hmm. And then when when was this? Was this in October? Pretty early on. Yeah. October, maybe the end of September even. So, yeah. Okay. And then I don't know, because I know that you contributed to some of the creative. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, like, talk to me about how this happened. Because normally, I mean, I guess technically you kind of help Taylor once in a while when yes. she, when she gets, <laughs> when she gets lucky, she can drag you away from client management. Yeah. Um, but Taylor, you're constantly generating ideas. I'm sure you don't get upset when you get a little help from Caroline, no, right? not at all. It's um, super fun. So let's talk about that. Like no. where, like, like, so at some point, you know, you and Brandon are like, this is what they want. And you have to then translate it to Taylor. And then it kind of goes into the, the boiling pot of ideas. Yeah. So we had a brainstorm with a lot of people on our team mm -hmm. and it was a really fun one. Everyone was throwing out ideas. And then a member on our team, Josh Tackett was, was talking about uh, the night before Christmas and kind of using that as almost a model for how we would write this. And so he just starts rattling off rhymes and I'm like blown away by how quickly he's producing just like such great yes. writing. And so we, we kind of had some different options that we were going to pitch to them. And then Taylor kind of pulled me aside and was like, do you want to take a stab at writing this uh, night or yeah, the night before Christmas concept. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, spent some time doing that and I actually just looked up the project and I wrote like eight stanzas of poetry that was like very like descriptive and yes. sing-songy and sweet. And I was, I was really proud of it. I was like, this is really fun. Um, but obviously we didn't use all of that, but that's what we ended up pitching to Reesers and they mm -hmm. fell in love with the concept too. So it worked out really well. Good. 
Taylor, talk a little bit about that that process, not just specifically, but generically, because this whole like, I mean, creative development wasn't even a word probably five years ago that we spoke about much around here. Yeah. And, and it's not just coming up with good ideas. I mean, for us, you have to really like uh, get all the right opinions, get the right notes, mm -hmm. like all that stuff. To, uh, talk a little bit about that and then this project. Yeah, I mean, creative development really starts with First of all, thinking about what the client wants. So what are they trying to promote? What story do they want to tell? And then really thinking through like, okay, but, and also who is this brand? And so how do we best tell that story through what the, the brand story is or mm -hmm. like the tone of the brand? So some tones lean more comedic, some tones lean a little more heartwarming, sentimental. sentimental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some are very inspirational, anthemic. Um, and so for research, we went into it. Honestly, we kind of had, I think... It was Josh Tackett, you, me. There was one other person. Maybe like Adam or Devin. I'm not sure. Someone creative. It was Devin. Yeah. And we just kind of started throwing ideas at the wall. And first, when the ask was, it was both Thanksgiving and Christmas pitch. So we were coming up with ideas for both Thanksgiving and for and for, and for Christmas. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then we were separate at yes. that point. And so then we pitched some Thanksgiving concepts, and then we pitched. Uh, Christmas concepts. And then they ended up being like, we want this generic for both mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And it ended up working out really well. Um, as far as writing goes, is that kind of more of what you were wanting me to get in or did I answer your question? No, you answered my question. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I think the funny thing about it too was they wanted us to highlight certain things, things they were offering. And so then we were trying to fit that into yes. the writing um, and make it not feel like disjointed when we're talking about, you know, standing yeah. rib roast in the midst of poetry yeah. kind of, which was mm -hmm. a fun obstacle to kind of tackle. So, well, and then also having to be descriptive mm -hmm. in 30 seconds. Like right. that's a it's really a hard challenge. thing is telling a really good story in 30 seconds. And so I think that also comes with working with the client of like, okay, you have all of these things that you want to highlight, mm -hmm. but if we can't get that across within the creative in 30 seconds, like how do we like work together to figure out the puzzle pieces of making this, like mm -hmm. what is the true message of this piece? Like what do you really want to yeah. portray at the end of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, before I bring the, I'm going to have Cole and uh, Mark. Yes. <laughs> Cole and Mark join me. But before I bring those guys out, um, let's talk a little bit about the execution, the shooting mm -hmm. and the, and the post-production from your guys' perspective. Um, I can't remember. Were either of you on set? We both, both were. You both were. Okay. Like, hey. The best day ever. <laughs> I was like in a blur. I apologize. No, you're good. Uh, but uh, I felt like the shooting on this, you know, was, I wouldn't say specifically difficult, but it was um, unique in that there was a lot of thought already put into it. Yes. So I was trying not to like destroy what other people came up with. I know there's a few times where it was like, we storyboarded it to come in from the left of frame. And yes. then I'm like looking at the shot and I'm going, there's just, I got to do it the other direction, yeah. you know? Um, and then I think we audibled a couple things. There was a okay. few things like, let's just try this or that. Um, you know, I guess to give my own input, uh, I, I don't even know how much I contributed. I guess I shot and directed it, but I feel like I was just doing what you guys had already planned for the most part, yeah. uh, trying to make it a little bit better. But I thought it was pretty easy from a shooting perspective. Um, what feelings do you guys have on, you know, how it shot based on how it was uh, planned and written? I think it was really close to the script. I think the only thing that when we were in production, Caroline and I kind of noticed was the pacing of the piece. Mm -hmm. um, because when we were obviously, again, 30 second commercial. <laughs> so when we were reading it to each other, we got, I think we timed it at like 28 seconds. Yep. But then looking at all the shots that we had storyboarded and what we wanted to include in the piece, um, it just was too much. So there were some yeah. audibles that we pulled, but I think those mainly came in post-production. Like I think in production, I thought it ran really smoothly. I think that everyone did a great job playing their parts. Mm -hmm. um, and that was another unique thing about racers is they like to have their creative concepts storyboarded. So a lot of it really is planned out before it gets to you. Yeah. Is that helpful or do you? Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't, I'm indifferent. Yeah. Sometimes I'm told exactly what to do. Sometimes I get told halfway what to do. Sometimes I don't get told what to do at all. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I can do all of those. Spot. Yeah. That's why I yeah. still have a job. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> what did you think? Yeah. Well, 
I think it's interesting because you can prepare and plan and create as much as you want to. But when you get to the actual day where it's all going down, yes. you know, there's so many moving parts. And sometimes you do have to have those conversations of like, okay, what can adjust? What can move to make this work, to make it the timing it needs to be, to make the shot look exactly right. And we have so many different you know, levels of expertise on our team, people who specialize in different things and have, you know, the best perspective at one element of what we're doing. And so that's what I really liked to be able to see that, you know, you were kind of able to be like, oh, we wanted to shoot it this way. And then Jason could kind of explain why that wasn't going to work, you know? And then there's that not even compromise, but almost like better solution. Yeah, Yeah. collaboration. And so that was one of the first shoots that I was able to be on of something that I like had a hand in writing and Mm -hmm. developing. And so it was like close to my heart. But to see, yeah, just solutions happen in real time. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, just made me proud of our team and just like have more trust in our team. Just like, okay, we're going to get it done the best way possible. So Yeah, I mean, you guys, I'm jumping out of order here a little bit, but both of you have been in communication with the client since then and working on other projects. Um, what do you feel like their, their take back was? Did they, did they they, they like it? I mean, what was the story? Yeah, I I think they had a great day that day. And I think they saw exactly what I saw, what I was just talking about of like that collaboration, that expertise, um, just the, the ease in which, you know, we can shift gears if we need to, but also the planning and preparation that went into it to make it a seamless day, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think they appreciated every aspect of both of those things. And, um, and yeah, we just have, we had a great relation, relational day. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they were able to sit on the monitor and observe the process, you know, have a lot of control in feedback and things yeah. like that. And so they felt very a part of it, which is great. Well, and it's cool too, because that really was the first shoot where they were really, I mean, that was the first shoot that yeah. Eduardo was on. So it really For was research, yeah. a relational building shoot. Yeah, it was important. Um, and I think he left there feeling very confident. Like, I think he came in probably questioning like, okay, can I trust these guys? And I, I hope I can speak for him in saying like, I do think he left with like this knowledge of like, oh yeah, these guys are really good at their job. Yeah. And we've heard that feedback since, which is just nice. Yeah. 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 That's great. All right. Well, I am going to bring in, uh, Cole and Mark who Cole worked on post-production. I think Mark did too. Mark Mm -hmm. actually cut the edit together and Cole worked on all the visual effects effects and graphics. Cool. All right. Dream team. Dream team. (laughs) Okay. We're back, uh, with Cole and Mark and it's and a diet Coke. Okay, so guys, we are talking about this Reese's Holiday commercial. So I think I want to start with the edit. Now, Mark, I cannot remember. Were you on set? I was. Yeah, I was on set. You're on set. Okay. So you had a little, which is helpful, right? Maybe let's talk about that. Like, what's it like being the editor on something when you were on set or when you weren't on set and you just get to discover footage? Yeah, I mean, so there's a huge advantage to being on set as the editor. Um, and having my hands in the in the pie, and I get to hear what the client wants and likes, um, as well as li- what the director wants and likes, and so it just makes the editing process a lot easier because I can just go in and just remember, like, oh, hey, they really liked this shot, mm-hmm. so I don't need to waste my time looking at all of these other ones because I know what they already like. Um, so that's a huge advantage as well, and then I get to advocate as well for what works in the edit and yeah. what doesn't. So. On this one, so talk to me a little bit about this spot. Uh, maybe first off... Talk a little bit about the shoot uh, and and what we were capturing. I'm trying to think from you because had you been on a research shoot before? Yeah, that was I think one of the biggest research shoots we've done. But usually okay. Brandon and I we go and shoot those. Yeah, roam around research. Yeah, um, with like a, a handheld on a stabilizer. Yeah, gimbal. gimbal. Um, whereas this one was more, uh, it's a bigger spot. It's Christmas spot. Yeah, um, a little more production value into this one, um, and we I think we. Pulled out all the stops. So we had two camera, no, one camera. Uh, Shut on red, I client think. Clientville, yeah. Client village and um, clients from, you know, higher up came in and yeah. were part of it. And so it was a, a, pr- a bit bigger one for resource for sure. Yeah. So tell me about the edit. What was this edit like for you? Did, was it just, you know, did it fall together fast or, or what was it like? Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, I think we had a quick turnaround anyways for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was a little nervous going into it, but it fell together really fast, especially with the storyboard and all the client notes and being on set helped a lot. Um, I think we got it done within like a day and a half to mm-hmm. two days. Yeah. Um, put it together and had it out, sent out for sound. Um, 
went super smooth, actually. Yeah. Nice. This one, if I remember right, which I should, I did direct it, but <laughs> I was there for the day. <laughs> um, but the the shots were pretty specific. You know, we do yeah. a lot of we do a lot of shoots where it's like, here's 150 clips, have fun. Yep. But this one was a little bit more like. I don't know, four to six takes of five or six scenes. Is that right? Yep. yep. How is that different when you approach it? Because you know you've also edited many things where it's like, there's a ton of footage, have fun, versus like, here's the storyboard, do what was expected. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that also helps with why we were able to get it done in in two days. And, you know, because we weren't having to pick the best takes of 100 different shots of what there was and go through all that. We knew, based off storyboard, what was needed and what shots were, you know, they're already laid out. So we picked the best takes of those. Yeah. Put it on a timeline, uh, get it all edited together. So that's a lot easier. Whereas you just come in with B roll, we have the video idea and here you go, let's make it happen. The video mm, idea right. is already there and uh, the shots are there. We just got to put them in there, right spot. Yeah. So yeah. That's great. It makes it a lot easier. Well, Cole, let's talk a little bit about your role. I think you worked on, was it graphics, a little bit of um, compositing? I, I think Maddie did most of the graphics. And I okay. was doing VFX compositing. Okay. We had one specific scene with like the storybook. Yes. The beginning, where we had to make it look like she ca- she comes to life. Yeah. She, yes. A real person comes out of this yeah. drawing. Yeah. You might have to lean in a little bit. Excuse me. No, you're I'm good. very mo- emotional. No, it's fine. So I get, get all over the you place. You can do that. Just yeah. keep the face in. <laughs> Let me just stay right here. So, yeah, let's talk about this. So, I mean, this was from the get-go. Like, there was this thought of a storybook and a style of transition and animation. And I, I do feel like I felt pretty specific in that, but not because it was my idea, just because I knew what they wanted. And I was like, we can't screw this up. Um, and I, I think that was one of the first things we did, wasn't it? I think so. I think, I mean, that one was like, at least on my side, I think it was a little bit easier for me solely because like what Mark was saying, it was very planned out. Yeah. So I knew like, you know, exactly what I needed to do on my side to make that shot work. Why don't you artistically describe that? Like, what were you creating? So that shot in particular, where I believe that's the opening shot where we have this grandma reading a book to her grandchild and we have a blank book mm-hmm. and we had to make it, we had to make a whole drawing that Maddie made mm-hmm. um, that we had to track onto the book. And from that shot, we have to have the image on the book turn into the footage that we shot at Reesers. Yeah. So it was something where we had to almost work backwards in a sense, where we had to take the shot, we, I took a still frame of whatever the final you know, yeah. transition shot was going to be. Which was really weird for me because usually I lay the edit and then give it to them and they come <laughs> right. in. But instead, I had to go find but you're that shot out <laughs> that they needed and get them to them. And then before you yeah, before I even then I, touched it, I had to edit. end up tracking the final shot onto the book. Yep. And then I had to give that to Maddie so she can make the drawing so it would match what the shot was. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of different for me because it's something where, I mean, we really did just work entirely backwards than what the normal is, but it made it look, you know, what it, it turned made. out great. It looked, well, yeah, it looked real. Now, is it just me or was there like a small sense of deja vu when you were like, I'm tracking an image onto a book? Oh, there was some deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we do this like a year ago? Uh, I, it's It's not foreign. There it's was the like stuff that's happened before. I feel like there was a couple motorcycles. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. That <laughs> one was different part. though because I think that that image was already on the book, right? So this was like a, a different layer of like because we had to like basically make it twice. So you, <laughs> but you specialize in the nuances oh, yeah. of compositing with books and live action video. Yeah, this one was, <laughs> yes, exactly. This one was a little, uh, I was a little bit more experienced this time around. Going yes, this one. that's great. That's great. Well, and when you were describing it, you know, one of the things that I think was interesting is artistically, which I mean, some of this is Maddie too, but we're kind of dealing with this like kids storybook kid looking illustration but then like it's like the christmas vibe so that kind of affects like everything you do artistically mm-hmm. wouldn't you say yeah it, even like the transition into the actual scene itself kind of had to be like kind of mystical and magical so yeah originally i think i was going to use like you know kind of sparkly transitions yeah. a little bit more magical and then just didn't look real i want it to like you know just 
real in yeah. a sense where a book is turned into a scene. Yeah. In a um, Disney world. <laughs> right. So I was like, oh, let's, it doesn't really look as good. So I ended up using like some ink drops. Yeah. So it kind of like just splashes onto the page and like it just yeah. very smoothly transitions. Yeah. For the, the for the mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And wh- I can't remember, was there compositing anywhere else in the spot or was it mostly that intro? I think it was mostly the intro. I think if I remember right, there was a wide shot. Of yeah, the we house. did it on the house. We did some compositing for yeah. the street lamp and I think the sky and the stars. And I think yeah, the window, there was a, didn't you do something on the yes, window? Yes, we had to show her in the window. Yeah. Or it was like the back of her chair. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we I like had to like made something. Yeah, I, <laughs> I ended up like it was really cheesy where like I was like finding like a uh, like a red chair on Google Images and was like trying to find one that like matched the best and then like yeah. put a very small chair in the window. Nice. It was, it was very fun. I think the the part of that I remember the most is there was the uh, the car like in the driveway. Oh, yeah, did you have to remove had, that? To remove yeah, the we car. had to completely remove the car. But it was dark enough to where it was like, okay, I'm just going to make a shadow. Just make a yeah. shadow, you know, like move the fence over a little bit. Yeah. Excuse me, move the fence over. Um, so it, it worked out. I think it would put the lamppost right there in its place. So it like kind yeah, of masked it a little true. bit more. Yeah, I have to apologize. I feel like I was like debatably lazy because I went and shot that at night and I didn't have the key, but I could have, but I didn't. And I just, and it was late at night and it was cold and I was just like, Sitting there looking at, because I think the car you had to remove was actually the car that I was driving. Yeah, Probably. it was the expedition. I think it was, it was the expedition. expedition. It was okay. The tailgate though. was open. <laughs> like. It worked out because I think it was a like a tripod shot. So it's like I, could, yeah, it I, didn't, have, I didn't have to worry about like tracking anything. So it looked pretty good. I was like, I got to get this. Yeah. It was kind of funny because I actually forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, I have to go back at nighttime. And then it was like that night. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to go do No, that. it actually worked out great because <laughs> I didn't have to track anything. I could good. add motion in, good. you know, in post. And I was like, oh, it looked Look perfect. Good. That's awesome. Well, great. Well, that kind of concludes uh, us digging through the details of this Reesers Holiday Spot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that and and enjoyed hearing some of the behind the scenes with the guys here and the girls earlier. Uh, if there's other episodes of Retrospect from the Archives that you want to check out, go to our website, retrospectfilms.com. We have over 30 episodes digging into old projects, and we hope you catch us in future episodes. We'll see you then. Sweet. Yeah. Bye.